Good morning. It's now just about 8.15 on the morning of Saturday the 6th of June. I'm Andy and this is my allotment. Got a fair bit to show you this time. I've actually been doing something on the allotment for a change. I know the last few videos have been, I've not done a lot. But this time I actually have. So I'll give you a quick whiz round and show you where we're up to. Uh, the half, of the, well, sorry, 500 litres of soil I had to deliver the compost, virtually gone. I'm going to order another one of those next week because that was really good stuff. So I'll recommend that anyway. Moving on to the planting. Now the square foot garden bed. Slowly, slowly filling this out. Uh, I've just watered it, which is why the patches of soil are darker where the cluck crops are. Uh, put some of the onions in from the um, for hardening off box because um, the cold frame. God, I can't even get my words out today. Uh, because, the, well, basically they need to come out. So some of them are a bit straggly, as you can see. If they still survive, I'm not too concerned. Got lots of other onions but uh, we'll move on to those in a bit. So I've got some uh, sorrel there, I think it is. Uh, pak choy coming on nicely here, two or three of them. Radish we've been having already. Uh, I'm not sure what that one is, I have to check it up. Some mixed leaves, some more onions. Look at those little gems, aren't they gorgeous? Some more little gems at the back, which are uh, from the cold, bot cold frame. Dear me, having problems today. And some more lettuce, a couple of little gems and a couple of red Italian frizzy lettuce, which are quite nice. And again, more onions. So it's coming on nicely now. There's lots and lots of things to see. Uh, things are coming through. I've got lots of things to plant out in here when they become ready. Uh, I'll show you those in the greenhouse in a little bit. And uh, we'll move on from there. Right, broad beans. Now I've been having a bit of problem with my broad beans. As you can see, they're uh, a dwarf varieties. Well, I hope they are because they're only that big. Um, lovely flowers on them some white with chocolate spots on them and also we've got some uh, purple ones the problem seems to be that as the flowers are dying off as you can see down here they're not actually producing any pods now someone has suggested to me that the bees are trying to uh, nibble into the flower itself to get the nectar and looking at the flower there I don't know if you can see this I can't see the screen properly it does appear to be um, little holes on the top of the flower so maybe that's what's happening if anyone's come across this themselves before, let me know please, because um, I've not really grown broad, broad beans before. I have, well, I have, but not really it, to this sort of level. I've had a few plants in and they've grown and I've got a couple of pods off them which were too late by the time I got them. So I've not really experienced in this at all. So if anyone could tell me what I'm going wrong, or if I'm going wrong, or what I can do to help, that'd be really, really good. But no, looking down all of them in here, I can't see a single pod yet yet they've been flowering for weeks and the flowers are now dropping off and dying off at the bottom but no pods so have I got bees that like to eat flowers? I don't know right while we're over here might as well look at the raspberries and uh, blackcurrants blackberries rather uh, this bed needs weeding again this is the bed I tried to empty didn't do very well as you can see <laughs> I've still got raspberries coming through when I thought I got rid of them on the other side loads and loads and loads of strawberries that bed was again going to be emptied, filled up covered in weed fabric and planted back through I just not had the time or the soil to be honest these two beds excuse my shadow uh, these two beds have been emptied lifted up planted through with weed fabric on top and they're doing great as you can see this bed full of black currants and the gooseberries as you can see that's on the on the picture but there's loads of gooseberries coming I'm also looking forward to these I really do like gooseberries so we shall see how we go with those. Right, let's move on. Sweet corn is out. Not sure if I showed you this last time, but uh, they're all out from inside the, the greenhouse and the comfrey is doing its usual thing of spreading over the path. Every year I say I'm going to move this and every year I leave it too late. This year I'm maybe going to move it. <laughs> Cauliflowers. Doing really well underneath the netting protection, which I hope you can see through on the camera. There are 12 in there and they are doing really well, thriving. Now, move up a little bit. Onions and garlic. This is my garlic at this end. This was put in um, at the beginning of the season. The, none of these have been overwintered. These are all been put in this year. Um, and they're doing well. As you can see, some of the bulbs are coming quite nice. A um, little bit of yellowing on the leaves, which I'm taking that down to water, uh, lack of water, because although it's been raining here, we've had some dry spells as well. And it's been cold. It's not really been brilliant weather for gardening. 
this end are the onions. Again, these have not been overwintered, but looking at the size of some of these, these are the best onions I've ever grown. There's some over there which are two, three inches across, which I'm absolutely gobsmacked by because I've never grown onions of this size before. They've always been like the size of big pickling onions, which have been very nice, but not what you're looking for when you're growing onions, but these, well, now they this bed has got my currants in it, red and white. Uh, if you remember in previous videos, this has been a complete and utter wasteland. It's been like waist deep in grass and not been um, the sort of thing that you want to show on video. But I spent a lot of time on this and as you can see, it's a scorched earth policy. Everything has been taken out of it apart from the currants. Two big bushes in here. This one at the front here is red. The big one at the back there is white. All the others, little twigs standing up, they're all red currants. When I, I tell the story every time, but I'll tell it again. When I brought the red currant here, I brought it in the car and I couldn't fit it in the back of the car because it was too tall. So I snipped off a lot of the top bunches and stuck them in the ground when I got here. It was very, very wet, rainy, horrible weather, but perfect for rooting and every last one of them rooted. I've supplied half the allotment with red currants so far and I've got maybe, let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten, another ten red currants in there, which are um, up for offer. So and off of the grub rather and so we'll see if people want them later on this year this bed on the other side of the greenhouse is something i want to be working on over the next couple of days at the moment it leans dramatically to the left whether you can see that on the film or not uh, i need to dig down this right hand side and level it get all the grass out of it dig it over and put some more soil in it because basically it's a mess uh, i've ignored it for a while i've got to get on with it so the next couple of weeks this is one of my projects then next to it i've got to lay a path which was there originally but I had to move everything down a foot or so because of the greenhouse and then this big chunk of timber there is going to go back in the ground with the other two edges on it to make another bed there so I'm working my way down slowly let's uh, have a wander down to ah yes raspberries, strawberries and the grape so this is where the raspberries were transplanted from the bed I tried to dig out I've got, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six raspberries in here I've also got six strawberries and I've also got a grapevine. Now when I cut the grapevine back earlier this year I was a bit concerned because I thought I'd done too much to it but as you can see it's growing again. I need to put some supports in here at either end, run some canes, canes some uh, wires between the two supports which will basically allow me to train the raspberries and the grapevine up so hopefully that'll do fine. Okay bottom of the allotment, grandson Jack two year old he's got his own little bit already um, am I pushing him a bit perhaps do I care no nah, do I he loves it uh, he's got some spinach in here which is unfortunately bolting he's got some little gem lettuce uh, last Sunday he took one of these home for his mum and he was very very proud to be taking something from his plot he's got um, what's supposed to be shallots but it looks like only one of them is split at the moment the other two haven't and he's got some strawberries he doesn't like strawberries but uh, he's growing them anyway and he has potatoes He's got some penland javelin in the front bucket, which are first earlies, and in the second bucket, which he's got to earth up this weekend when he comes, are some um, colleen, which are um, second earlies or early main crop, depending on where you look. Rhubarb's doing well. Um, it has been slug attacked quite a bit. I need to get in there and do a bit of harvesting, etc, etc. I've got loads and loads of strawberries. I've got another two dozen on the table there. They've been in pots for ages. They need to come out and go somewhere. I've just got to find somewhere to, to put them. So what I'm going to do is alongside this bed here, I'm going to build another bed, very similar, all the way along, fill it with soil, if I've got enough left, and put strawberries into it through black plastic. Right, let's move on. Potatoes. This year I'm growing everything in buckets and in bags, as you know. Um, again, excuse my shadow. The five on the front here are first earlies. They are... Uh, bambinos. The three at the back are Pendle and Javelin, which are coming up quite as well. They're first earlies as well, as you can see. And the four buckets at the back of there, they are um, Colleen, I think they are. No, sorry, not, they're not. They're not Colleen. They are um, Mary's Rose, which is a second early. And then in these three bags here, which are, you can see things are just coming through, this is the Colleen. These were put in later than Jack's. So it's not surprising that they are actually taking a bit longer to do. Cold frame. I can actually remember the word for it this time. Uh, lattice in there that needs to go out. And spinach which has bolted because it's in too small a container. It's been too warm for it. 
and I think I'm going to have to start again. I'll harvest the leaves off the spinach and get rid of the plants, but the lettuce is going to go out. There's uh, one, two, three, four, five lettuce in there, which is doing okay, but need to get out because they're getting too big for that. Quick look inside the greenhouse. <laughs> Who am I kidding? Quick look. Right. It's rather full. Now we had lots and lots of squashes planted up in these like plastic container, these little plastic cups. I spent um, quite some time transplanting them all on. As you can see, I've got a fair number. We've got some gold courgettes, gold rush, uh, pumpkin Atlantic giant. Um, got one of those, I think. Uh, courgettes Romanesco, which is a stripy one. A couple of spaghetti squashes. A um, couple of cucumbers at the back somewhere. Yeah, that's the Zucchetta tromba. That's the one that climbs up and hangs down. At the back, I've got uh, all these are uh, peppers and. Uh, so you can catch it on here. We're actually starting to get flowers on them, which is wonderful. Got one big tomato there, which is a green zebra. I've got lots of other little tomatoes around. I've got some um, uh, marmand. I've got one marmand, a couple of um, black cherries, a couple of money makers, all sorts going on. Now at the back there, we have got some tomatillos, some swede, which are looking a bit sorry themselves. On some beetroot. The beetroots are nearly ready for putting on, so when they are ready for putting on, uh, they will be put into these uh, plastic cups for the to start with, so they get it a bit more established, and then the whole plug will be planted out in the square foot gardening area. Shallots, they're going to go out somewhere today, I'm going to find a home for them, because uh, they shouldn't be in here now. Some beans at the back, these are French beans, and I think they are cobra. Yes, they are cobra. Uh, I wanted blue late this year, but I couldn't get hold of any, so I got some cobra instead. There's about 16 plants come out out of 32, which isn't a brilliant germination rate because I know it's new seed, but I'm just putting it down to me being stupid. Uh, disaster movie at the back. Uh, I had the lid on top of that little propagator, not realising how hot it got in here, and I fried everything. So I had some uh, some Brussels in there, some kale, and some tomatoes. All got fried. It's not too late to start again, so it's not the end of the world. Uh, this is why I'm not too bothered about my onions having problems. I have in here three rows of shallots at this side, and then I've got some uh, red baron, uh, some um, kelsey in there as well. So I've got plenty in there. There's probably somewhere in the region of 50, 60 onions there, maybe more, and about 20 shallots. So again, not too concerned. This mini poly tunnel. Got some herbs on the top. These are the ones to survive my total neglect in the, the um, polytunnel last year. And they're doing okay. They're doing well. And then they've got parsnips in there. And um, again, I'm failing with parsnips this year. Last year I did great. I got about 30 parsnips out of the ground. This year, as they germinate, they're growing up and flopping over and dying. Not sure what I'm doing wrong, but I may just have to face it. I can't have parsnips this year. So there we are underneath here. I used to have two trays full. I've managed to uh, cajole people to take some off me. I've still got, um, let's see, about 18 left. I only want six for myself, so I'm probably going to plant 10 plants and I've got eight spares. Then down below there, we've got some more brassicas, some kohlrabi, some uh, romanesco and such like, which are not doing too brilliant at the moment. I think they got a bit scorched yesterday. Uh, the door's going to be open today, so we'll see how we do. Under here, Hearst Green Shaft peas coming through, and this lot is all my herbs. Uh, basils, um, dill, lemongrass, all this sort of stuff. It's all coming through, coming through nicely. So, uh, overall, very pleased with how things are going today. The whole allotment itself is looking good. Uh, the grass is under control. I strimmed it all last weekend, or last Thursday, I think it was, a week last Thursday, and it's still kept down. There's still patches of it around, and there's still big weeds there, like you can see there. But overall, not bad, not bad at all. Anyway, how long have I been going for? 14 minutes, that's long enough. Uh, thanks all for watching, thanks everyone who's been subscribing recently, I do appreciate the comments that you all put on, I do answer every single comment, and I say if anybody knows what's wrong with my broad beans, please, please, please let me know, as it's the first time I've grown them properly, and I don't want to sit there and have a bed doing nothing, I'd rather plant it other things in it, I'd rather put potatoes in it than have it grow and then do nothing. So if you can help on that, please do. Anyway, I will catch you next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.